Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and I'm the owner of Alicia Be Creative. Here on my channel, I create all things Tumblr tutorials as well as other resin related crafts. And so we are back yet with another Tumblr tutorial. And so we're going to be doing kind of like this almost rainbow themed Tumblr paired with a very non-traditional sort of animal print pattern. And so I'm really excited to show you how I put this together, the inspiration behind this design, and of course, all of the products that I use today will be listed and linked down in the description box down below. You of course can find some discount code there as well to save yourself a little bit of extra money. Before you leave, give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And let's go ahead and jump right into today's video. Today we are starting off with a 20 ounce hog tumbler. This is a 20 ounce skinny. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get my tumbler prepped and ready for this design. So of course you guys know for prepping, I am just going to remove the little stainless steel piece off the bottom of these cups. Not all cups have these, but the hog tumblers do. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give this cup a rough sand with a 60 to 80 grit sanding block really scuffing up the surface removing all of that super satin looking shine to the tumbler make sure I got a nice scuffed up surface and then follow up with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel just to clean this off so this design is actually inspired by this image right here so this is a design created by um, Hope McCoy she did this with rhinestones and um, she's from in delicate designs is her business and so she did this design in rhinestones and I loved the pairing of the rainbow with the leopard print. So that's what we're going to do today. So after I've gotten my cup cleaned off, we're going to go ahead and spray paint this tumbler. So I'm using a bunch of different paints, which I will list right here on the screen as well as down in the description box. So because it was gloomy, I wasn't able to get a shot of me spray painting. I had to kind of do this kind of in sections in order to get the entire cup spray painted, but we're going to go ahead and jump into getting our glitter prepped. So we're doing an almost rainbow themed tumbler here. We're not quite going full rainbow here. We're sticking with kind of pink, green, blue, and purple shades. And so I've matched my colors on of spray paint to match each of the glitters we're using. So these are all the glitters that we're going to be using, all of which are from my Asia Creations. And I actually have had these colors for a while, but I never thought to pair them together. But I saw a story on the My Asia Creations Instagram and it showed like a throwback from somebody's order and it was all of these colors. And I was like, oh my gosh, that would make such a beautiful tumbler, all those colors on one cup. So that is kind of how I ended up stumbling on putting these colors together. You'll also know that I'm not using any other cuts of color. I really am only sticking with one cut of color for each of the shades. And we're just going to do a nice ombre with that. So I just started off with Limeade there. Limeade is that beautiful green color. And I've just gone in and kind of just dusted the center section and attempted to slightly blend upward and downward. So when I'm doing ombres with multiple colors, I like to stick and start with the middle section first. I find that I get the best blend if I start in the middle and work my way in either direction versus trying to start at the top and moving down or starting at the bottom and moving up. I'm a little bit able to control how far my glitter goes because if I were to start on the very bottom with that dark purple, chances are I would accidentally get some specks of glitter into as far as the green section. And so in order to control that and make sure I don't have all of the colors ombre into one another and really only ombre into the colors on either side of each other, I like to start in the middle sections. That seems to be what works best. So I went in with tropical blues, which was the beaut or with Tiffany who I lied with the blue color there. And now we're going in with a bubble gum, which is like this perfect colored pink. Love this pink. Absolutely beautiful. So we're going to go ahead and go in with the bubble gum up here in this this kind of second pink section from the top of the cup. Again, I just like to tilt my cup in either direction. It really helps me to control my glitter. You'll also notice that I did put my, my glitter in medicine cups. I have a bit more control when I'm using a shaker, but since most of these were in bags, I ended up just transferring them into little medicine cups. It also saves me in case I end up contaminating any of my glitter so I don't contaminate the entire batch. Um, and I'm able to get a little bit more control than working with this right outside of the bag. 
So this color is lavender. Lavender is a beautiful metallic color. It's a color I definitely haven't used enough of, but I really just love how beautiful this purple lavender color is gonna blend into our darker purple at the very bottom of the cup. So next we're gonna go in with our top color here. So this is our bright pink we're gonna go in with up the top. This is like a neon pink, this color. I absolutely love, 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 love this color. Um, I've used this color, uh, Pink Pixie Dust, in other tutorials because it just screams neon to me. It just screams summer to me. And I feel like it just really gives a such beautiful dynamic look to this kind of semi rainbow color we're going with. The final color here that we're going to use on the very bottom edge of this cup is Selena. So this is definitely an underrated color. This is actually the first time I've used Selena. I've had Selena in my you know, glitter stock and shelves for forever. And I cannot believe that I have not really used this glitter on its, like by itself until now. It is a really breathtaking color. It gives me like violet purple vibes, which I think is just perfect to play off of that lavender color. So now that I have kind of a basis of all my colors on, I've gotten pretty good coverage, but I wanted to expand a little bit of the Tiffany Who section, that blue section. I felt like it was a little bit slim compared to the others. So this is your opportunity after you've gotten most of the cup glitter to just go back and forth. Make sure your entire cup is of course covered in glitter and obviously touch up any of those sections that you need to. We've gone with the epoxy method, so I am going to go ahead and let this dry for about two to three hours and then I'll get it on the turner after I've sanded with some clear gloss spray paint. So I'll spray this cup down probably two to three times since there's multiple colors. Make sure that I'm dry brushing off any excess glitter that isn't sticking. Then that goes on the turner using my Flynn Sisters Premium Epoxy. I did two coats of that. I did 20 mLs in each coat and I'm now able to get into my sanding. So for sanding, we're really gonna focus on the top and bottom rims here, really making sure to get those nice and smooth. So I have a pretty thin layer of epoxy, I would say, um, than other cups that I typically would, would be using at this stage. So I was, I went in a little bit lighter with my epoxy coats, knowing that I was going to be covering this cup in vinyl. So typically you guys will see on my channel, I like to use vinyl on like on the tumbler itself and then go in with my glitters. So because I was gonna be putting the vinyl on top of the glitter, I wanted to make sure that my epoxy was not too thick. That would kind of disturb or give some puckering towards the edges, which typically can happen when you apply vinyl over top of an already epoxied surface. So this is a burst template design. I got this from an Etsy shop. Um, I got this from a shop on Etsy. And I'm actually using this, and I've cut this out of the uh, printed pattern leopard print vial from Maisha Creations. So this is a pattern vinyl that I've had for a while. I've actually done quite a few different cups with this kind of pattern vial, vinyl and have like four sheets of it because I just love, of course, leopard print, you guys know. But this is a beautiful like traditional leopard print like look. And so I thought that this would just go so well. So although we're not going with the like true design, the true rock star uh, inspired design from Hope. I do think that this is really going to turn out really nice. And I really hope that you guys kind of enjoy this kind of fresh look on this burst tumbler look. So this is not the first burst template of this design that I have seen. I've seen so many of these different designs. I don't know that I've ever seen the leopard print paired with kind of a rainbow theme but I have seen these really beautiful like burst templates. I had originally thought that I would try and create my own sort of burst template in Procreate, but I kind of just got stuck on what I wanted it to look like. So I just decided to do some searching on Etsy and found this and thought that this would really look really beautiful up against those colors in the background. So I've just kind of cut a, after I've weeded my template, I've gone ahead and cut my contact paper to fit the size of my template here. So obviously before I cut this on pattern vinyl, I did measure my cup. So a 20 ounce is about nine and a half inches around. This is after epoxy and about eight inches long was what I measured it by. I wasn't really I wasn't really too, um, didn't really care too much about like how long it was as long as it went from top to bottom of my cup because I know I can trim that up, but I really was trying to be pretty mindful about making sure that the width of my tumbler was captured. Now that I've gotten my contact paper on my pattern here, I'm gonna go ahead and just trim up most of the edges. I will leave one edge 
um, one edge free because that'll be what I'll start with and use to adhere to the cup. But I am going to trim up all the other edges and this is just going to help me better really be able to visualize when I go to measure this on the cup, how I'm going to be able to adhere it and make sure that it's going to match and wrap around nicely on the other side where the two seams meet. So now just kind of test measuring again. I like to do this two or three times. I was kind of surprised I was able to get the seams to line up really nicely like the first time because um, that never happens. <laughs> so I took advantage of that and got this right in my cup cradle to kind of hold that template in place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove, of course, that paper backing. So just peeling up the pattern, I'll take my scissors and cut just about an inch or so of the back of the backing on this vinyl. And then I'm going to anchor down that one inch, starting by smoothing the inner section to the outer section. Then I'm gonna measure again. I wanna make sure I measure again. Everything's gonna line up and nothing shifted when I set this down. And then we're gonna go ahead and get this applied. So you wanna be careful with these kinds of templates that have those really kind of fine um, edges and points and things. Sometimes when you put them on transfer tape and then you try and roll them onto a cup, you can get kind of some issue with the transfer tape not pulling the actual pattern vinyl up. So you'll see as I get to like the center here where all those points meet in that burst section in the center that I had to um, kind of use my fingers to get those sections to adhere to the transfer tape so that would they would roll off and onto the cup. So just be mindful of that because I have had opportunities and times where I've done designs that are like intricate like this, like a herringbone or something with those edges. And if that one corner does not go on correctly, you know, you realize you're missing an entire piece. And sometimes you don't realize it till literally you're completely done with the cup. So don't make those mistakes. Go slow here. Take your time, especially with these kind of points and corners that really can kind of get stuck to the backing and not to your transfer tape to make sure you get the full pattern onto your cup. So before we meet to the other side, I'm gonna pull up the other edge of that transfer tape so that I can secure this final seam here, lay that section down, again, smoothing in from the in, inner sort of section to the outward section. And now we're gonna go ahead, now that this is all ready to go, I'm just gonna very carefully remove the transfer tape. So I'm being careful because my pattern does go below my cup, right? So it's a little bit longer than my cup and I'm okay with that because I know that I am gonna do a little bit of trimming and I was a little bit intentional with that as well, knowing that I potentially would get some like crinkling or puckering of the vinyl on either rim or edge because we already have epoxy on this. So that also gave me a little bit of wiggle room to be able to make any trims and any edits to the vinyl that I need to without completely ruining the entire pattern. So slowly remove that transfer tape and then we'll save this transfer tape for another project at another time. And now I'm just gonna go back through and really be mindful and take my squeegee tool and push up on those um, edges at the top and at the bottom. You will notice some puckering and some wrinkling towards the top. And so I'm trying to take the edge of my vinyl squeegee tool and really just push those out there and make them flush. Another tip and trick that you can use, and I of course didn't think about it because I was just already, you know, arms deep in this cup, is that if you take your heat gun and just run it over the vinyl just a little bit, it does allow your vinyl to become a little bit more stretchy and a little bit more sticky. And so you're able to then use your squeegee tool again to kind of push that vinyl down so it doesn't continue to lift back up. So that's also something that I wish I would have remembered when I was doing this um, because I think that it would have saved me from having to kind of go back and forth with my squeegee tool for so long to push those little wrinkles and things out. But as I'm working on the bottom section here, you'll also notice I am pushing over the bottom edge any excess vinyl. We will of course trim this bottom edge to be sure that we have a nice clean edge along the bottom of the cup. So I'm pretty satisfied. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my um, cup edging tool and trim that bottom section there. That way we can get this ready for adding our pinstriping. Now that I have the entire cup nicely trimmed, we're gonna go in with this sort of chrome or bronze colored nail tape. So this is literally just nail tape I purchased off of Amazon. It comes in various colors definitely is something to grab up. What I do find though with nail tape is you definitely need to be super 
careful with nail tape. Nail tape can kind of sometimes be a pain. It definitely is not as easy to use as washi tape. Um, and this is a tedious process. So this process right here of just lining all of these different sections with this nail tape took probably a good 30 minutes of just striping. So this is probably the one part of the design that takes the longest, especially because the nail tape sometimes wants to stick, sometimes it doesn't want to stick. So go slow here, take your time. I did have to take a couple of the pieces off and kind of replace them just because they kept lifting. And obviously we don't want any lifting to happen during our final coats of epoxy. So once I've gotten all of the striping finished, I did just make sure to trim up everything. And now that I'm pretty satisfied with everything, my lines look good, everything's laying down the way I need it to, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to cover our nail tape with some polycrylic. So polycrylic is what I'd like to use on top of my washi tapes, my holographic vinyls, my nail tapes, anything that is not going to or potentially could repel my epoxy or do any kind of lifting during the final coats of epoxy. So I'm just put a little bit of that polycrylic from Minwax right in a medicine cup. I'm taking my gloved hand and just very carefully going over all of those sections. Polycrylic isn't going to do absolutely anything to any other part of your cup other than keep everything nice and flat and laid down. So this is a great kind of last step to be able to ensure that you really don't have any issues during your final coats of epoxy, especially if you're working with some of those more troublesome vinyls that sometimes can either repel epoxy or get a little bit lifted when you're doing the final coats of epoxy. So it's an added, it's an additional step, but it's definitely a step that I love to take, especially with nail tape, because nail tape is just always known for lifting. And so I'd rather take this this extra step now then have a bunch of lifted sections and have to do a bunch of sanding and almost have to kind of start the pinstriping process over. So once I have gotten this applied, I'll let this dry for about 30 minutes and then of course we're going to put this on the turner and do our final two coats of epoxy. So you guys know that for my final coats of epoxy, I always am using Flint Sisters Premium Epoxy, two final coats, about 30 mLs each, and here is the final look at this design. So I absolutely love the pairing of this traditional leopard print with this this beautiful rainbow in the background. You guys will have to let me know down below if you've tried this first template design, what colors you've done this in, and if you're gonna try this one. If you loved today's video, give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and you guys know I'll see you in the next one. Bye!